the Elizabeth Gaskell video as promised and I just finished Mary Barton and I knew kind of right away where I wanted it to go into the ranking. So without further ado, uh, my least favorite would be Ruth. So when I say my least favorite Elizabeth Gas Gaskell, that's, you know, still it's a least favorite from a favorite author. And I did enjoy this one. I read this with Katie from Books and Things a few years ago, and it is kind of the fallen woman story. Ruth is seduced by a really charming and charismatic sort of character and um, just really swept away by him. And then uh, when she becomes pregnant, he just leaves her. He decides he's not interested in staying with her. Um, but then it does have sort of a redeeming turn. I've heard it compared to um, Tess of the D'Urbervilles with a happy ending. So there are some really kind and compassionate people that come into Ruth's lives. So it's not quite how you think it's going to end being a Victorian novel about the, you know, fallen woman, quote unquote. Uh, and the, uh, the only reason that this is lowest on there is that I just adore the other ones even more than this one. And I do find coming out of this now uh, over a year later, it is slightly forgettable, unfortunately. So I'd be curious. I, I will definitely reread it at some point because it is Elizabeth Gaskell. And I would like to kind of, you know, refresh my memory on it. I'll be curious how I remember it the next time. Uh, then next, my, uh, the next one up is Cranford. This is just a little nugget of a novel and it is, um, two, a little over 200 pages and it's just very, very humorous. It's a small town based on, uh, one of the towns that Elizabeth Gaskell lived in a lot of her childhood called Nutford. And it's a very insular community, but a very close knit community and many unmarried, uh, older women in the community. And there's just lots of memorable lines that will make you laugh and really funny instances like a sunburned cow, uh, and a cat swallowing lace that they were trying to, um, to bleach. So uh, all in all, it's just very funny and uh, very has a lot of warmth and heart to it. But the brevity of it does, you know, make it pale a little bit in comparison to the subsequent ones. But overall, I definitely recommend this, especially if you are just beginning with Victorian novels, because this is very palatable. And it is um, like the, the chapters are like four pages each. So it's very easy to get through. Then next in the lineup, and one that I read my very first Victober, was Sylvia's Lovers. I still remember this so vividly. And that's what I really enjoy about really particularly gothic novels is that they really do stick into your brain. And I can remember the first scene so well. She's walking to town and she has enough money to get fabric to make a cape and she's choosing between red or gray. And it's just, you know, it doesn't seem like much, but just the way that it's written and you see her walking through this town and you get an idea of the landscape of the town. Um, and then therefore what the income of the town is based on. And so this is set in a Northern uh, village called Monkshaven. So way Northern England, it's a fishing village. And so the mo you know, most, the majority of the income in the town comes from fishing. So that's kind of the very like, uh, labor with their hands, uh, you know, good, good, like working class people make up this town, very hardworking, very, uh, just hardy people. And within this, there is a love triangle. So if love triangles are not your thing, I can tell you, you're not going to like this. But if Victorian novels are your thing and love triangles don't put you off, I think you will really enjoy this, especially if you just love very atmospheric and gothic novels. It's really, really excellent. It's just, I adore it so much. Very romantic. So when you want a very melodramatic Victorian novel, this is definitely one to go to. Um, it is uh, pretty... Uh, not nearly as happy as Ruth, but still very, very good if you're okay with that. So then moving on to Mary Barton, which has now surpassed Sylvia's Lovers. And it's really interesting because the whole first half of the book 
um, I kind of thought it was below Sylvia's Lovers. And then the second half, I knew right away. I'm like, nope, this is above Sylvia's Lovers. So this is uh, a really hard book for me to talk about, especially since I just read it. Um, I really don't want to give any spoilers, but it is also set in a manufacturing town. It's set in Manchester, which is where Elizabeth Gaskell spent uh, much of her adult years. And um, you really do get to know very uh, intimately, very well, just different people who are just trying to keep bread on the table um, through working in uh, the factories at this time. And Mary Barton obviously is our protagonist and she lives uh, with her with her father, John. And then she also has um, a couple connections. And so in this, uh, it's it's a really interesting novel and in that it's a little bit of everything. And um, there's kind of some uh, love lornity, if that's a word, love lornity. I don't know if it is a word, but just Mary really trying to figure out, you know, where her affections lie. But there's also a very dramatic thing that happens in it. And I don't want to give, you know, anything away, but uh, it really does pick up speed with the second half, even though I found most of the first half really just easy to get through. But then I really was flying through it with the second half. So all in all, I really enjoyed Mary Barton and I highly recommend it. I think if you like, um, this felt a lot like Bleak House by Charles Dickens, but with the pacing and kind of the more brevity of Lady Audley's Secret. So I think if you like Bleak House or Lady Audley's Secret, you would really enjoy this one, just with the way suspense builds in certain parts. Then my second favorite, and oh, I the first time I read this, uh, North and South, I did not enjoy it that much. But I reread it this spring, and oh my goodness, did it ever just knock my socks off. And I think it was just a case of the right book at the right time. It was exactly what I was in the mood for. It was exactly what I was feeling. And uh, this is set, uh, it's also does a lot, it has a lot to do with industrialization. And uh, the protagonist is Margaret Hale, who lives in the south of England, and her father is a vicar. And then um, basically, he decides he's having doubts about what he believes, and he doesn't really feel that he can, in good conscience, continue to be a vicar if he's not really sure that he believes in it. So he kind of uh, uproots his family and takes them to the north of England. Um, you know, they were living in this beautiful rural community, and then they move up to where it's very cold and dirty and just not very scenic. And so a lot that Margaret doesn't know, and she's very homesick. And whilst there, she meets the mill owner, John Thornton, a.k.a. Mr. Darcy. Uh, but somewhat, but he is um, really interesting and fascinating. You know, he has uh, worked hard to get where he is. And uh, he's just a really interesting character. So it's just so beautifully, so lushly written. And it's just amazing. It's a great character study. It has uh, social commentary. It has suspense. Uh, with, you know, certain turns that the plot takes and just a little bit of humor in there as well. I really do adore North and South, but it is surpassed by, this should come as no surprise to anyone who's watched me, my channel, and heard me talk about Elizabeth Gaskell, Wives and Daughters. So I reread this this May with a group of lovely, lovely ladies and, um, was just struck again by how much I love this novel. I was nervous going in because I talked it up so much, you know, and then you don't want a favorite book to not be a favorite book anymore. But I did love this so much. And this is the story of Molly Gibson, uh, and uh, whose father is a doctor. And he decides when she is uh, turning more into a young lady that she needs a stepmother to help care for her. And so he wants to get this done quickly. And so he kind of expedites the process. And in comes Hyacinth with her daughter, Cynthia. And uh, the plot takes off from there. There are a couple of key families that you know within the neighborhood, um, including the Hamleys of Hamley Hall. And so that includes the squire and Mrs. Hamley and uh, their two sons, Osborne and Roger. But this, what I love about this book is that it seems like it's not about much of anything. It's a very quiet novel at first, but then as you're reading, 
you just are getting more and more kind of invested in the plot and more and more wrapped up in just this small little town and kind of the, the comings and goings of everyone and, uh, you know, who's who's visiting with so-and-so and who's sending a letter to so-and-so. And, uh, yes, so just between the humor and the heart and uh, the slow but uh, definitely, like, momentum-building plot, I highly, highly recommend this. It is so worth your while. So for those of you who have read this as the group read for October this year, I'm so pleased. And I really, I don't think I've heard anyone say they haven't enjoyed it. It's just such a likable novel. It's so likable. I don't know how, you know, how else to put it because um, it's just very gentle and easy, but without being smarmy at the same time, because the characters are very flawed, but appealing and sympathetic at the same time. They're, they just feel very real and very human. Uh, yes. So those are my Elizabeth Gaskell novels from order in order of least favorite to most favorite. I just adore Elizabeth Gaskell so much and I, oh, I love her so much. So, uh, let me know, uh, you know, any of them, uh, that you've read and whether you didn't enjoy them or whether you did enjoy them, I would love to discuss with you, but I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys for another one soon. Bye.